still working on my scythe. My Grim Reaper gloves came in. Now I do, I don't like that they're open here. I'm gonna glue some cloth in there just so you don't see my hands. So I don't want to betray the artifice I'm creating. These are quite a bit bigger than my fingers. I mean, I do have short little stubby fingers. But you can see it's like a whole digit longer than my fingers, which is good. Like I like that your fingers are long and big. It just, it looks good. Now this looks pretty much like I anticipated. I do like that it comes, it's got like this kind of sleeve part to it. It covers up way past your wrist, which is good, because again, you don't want to betray the artifice. Now these don't look great. I mean, like the, the castings of it are pretty decent. But a little bit of wash, you know, some black and brown and some fuller earth. These are going to look really good, because you want to look dirty and old, and they, you know, they're just a quick paint right now. I mean, they are, it looks like they are base, kind of a gray latex, and then they just put some white on there. You need a lot of texture, and we're going to get that. That's going to make these look a lot better. So that is that. I, I like them. They're going to, I mean, I needed something, and this is, that's going to work well. You know, you reach out, that's going to, yeah, it's perfect. Now I'm going to start putting the scythe together. So I did, I was, I cut a recess in here for the blade, because this does have a blade part, and that way I'll kind of fold this down, and get a nice kind of crisp edge that blade comes down. I'll have to trim this inside. I don't exactly know what the best angle is. And the other side, I cut... I got cut a little too deep. I was cutting my little bevel. And you see, I cut all the way through. But actually, I like stuff like that. I don't, I don't view mistakes as an issue because if everything I build, I like for it to look old and worn and beaten and have a story. And so, like this scythe, well, I'm here on this part of the blade, I'm about to create some damage to a mask the mistake. But b, it's gonna like create a story. I'm like, oh, what happened here? Like something went on there, and just it adds an intrigue. Like maybe you know the guy was swinging and hit something. You don't know, but like I like when the props tell a story. So any mistake, anything that I don't quite love, well, it's an opportunity. Like this. Should I have just like maybe cut the mat straight? Well, this was two full mats. I'd have to put it yet another joint if I had cut this out completely. But it would have created a nice butt joint because this bevels on the end, kind of a round over. But I don't mind that because I'm going to cut through that. And yes, and it's all kind of localized, but I'm going to work on that. And we're going to make it look like some kind of damage or something's going on and make it work and you know maybe i start to like kind of taper out and make it look like rust or something i don't know but don't let mistakes be a detriment use those to improve upon stuff so i still need to put the whole blade together i've got the top part cut i'm gonna glue the top and bottom half together now that i've cut that bevel that bevel's just gonna be a little tricky if i glue them together and then cut it actually i wonder if i should glue the bevel i should go ahead and glue the bevel because i have the most amount of access once i glue things together that access is gone so I'll do that first, then glue them together, and then I'm just going to cut this edge. I mean, if I was, I should really look at it, map it out. I think if I just 45 degree it, usually with foam, you can 45 degree cut anything, and with the way it bends and moves, you can just make it work if it's too much, too high, too little, too low. But, let's see, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to glue the bevel. I'm going to glue this inner cut, then I'll maybe slice this, because the thing is, it's tough to cut foam when you're cutting such a little bit because it wants to flex. And I like really want to cut this at 45. It would have been best to have cut it when I first was cutting this out instead of now. You could dremel it. Dremeling takes forever. Most time what I'll do is I'll just take my hobby knife. You get a sharp blade. You want a new blade because as soon as it starts to drag, it's not going to cut well. You want it to cut like butter and just slice this thing the whole way down and then glue it together. Because again, like I said, like if this doesn't quite go together well, well, it's damaged. So I'm going to glue that. Uh, I did glue my lock you know i just i pulled the trigger glued it all in all my wiring in there let's hope it's good because it ain't coming out so i need to glue the front on can you see like the edges of it it needs a lot of work i need to belt stain and drum that out to get that kind of in a good spot because it ain't there right now but it will get there my lights do still work which is wonderful because you know i was having an issue with that before i still want to diffuse that a little bit you know i've had some ideas i've not capitalized on those ideas yet I need to glue this whole thing together because it, like, it just, it needs a lot of work. This turned out being twice as thick. I wanted two, two floor mats thick. I'm four. That is just kind of the way these things worked out. I think it's detrimental. No, like it's just a big old honking lock. You know, it probably needs to be a little thicker. So I, I'm fine with that. It will, it will do. My, I don't know what you call this, this end part of the scythe. But you can see, I, it's got a little bit of a bow to it. You can see it like really well there. I don't know. I don't know how I did that. So now when I was gluing this, I just I think I got off one side or the other. I think with a little bit of heat, that's gonna like straighten out because you can heat it and kind of work it in place. Like I said before, you know, don't let mistakes hinder you. Like some maybe somehow he swung it 
So I'm going to drag swing and hit something and bent it. I don't know. But I'm going to use a little bit of heat to try to straighten out a little bit because it's a little, a little too wonky for me, but I don't care if it's a little messed up. You know, you just keep rolling, you keep building because it's all going to work out. All right, we got a very nice clean. I mean, you can see, you can see that nice bevel to it. That's going to look good, and I need to do a good job making the two bevels meet. I mean, overall, that's just a nice clean bevel. Look at that. That looks good. So now I'm going to button the top together, the two pieces, and then the bottom. And the bottom, I will need to cut it. How exactly I'm going to do that, I don't know. Now I'm wondering, do I cut it before I put the top together? And maybe I just tape it together, mock it up to figure out what is the angle I need to cut. I do it by hand, getting that perfect angle is always a little tricky because you can't quite figure it out by hand. Uh, I've cut it before on, say, the bandsaw. For this, as small as it is, thin as it is, I don't think it's going to be easy. Sometimes you just do the best you can, you glue it together, and you hope for the best. Like I said, you know, it's just battle damage it. That makes things very easy. Because looking at it right now, I mean, like I said before, like 45 kind of always works. 45, 45 will probably work right here. I think really, it probably should be a little steeper than 45. I probably should tape this up, mock it up, and get an idea of what it should be, because I don't want to... It's going to be easier to cut them up separate instead of putting this all together and doing it. And overall, man, I'm, I'm liking how this looks. And look at that. You were seeing that bevel. It looks good. It looks really good. And I had a little bust, and you see right here, kind of split on me. I just, this second, when I cut this second, I don't know how I screwed up my cut, but I did. A little bit of contact cement. You barely even notice it. And again, battle damage. It's all battle damage, and we can work with that. As many times I've done stuff like this, I'm like, oh, should I mock this up? Maybe I should, because I forgot. I want this end to kind of come to a peak, just because it's a scythe, and it should. And so I think that thickness, I'm fine with that. I will need to cut my PVC uh, skeleton, because it, like, it really, once you get about right in here, you need it, it just doesn't work. Uh, but overall, like, I'm, I like that. I think this thickness, with the scale of this thing, the size of this thing, this is a good thickness, which uh, really I'm bound to this thickness, because that's what it takes to get over the PVC. The bottom still kind of figuring that out. I think I'm just going to cut it by hand, hope for the best. Sometimes it goes well, sometimes it doesn't. Figure out exactly where it starts to come together on this end of it. So I've got this bevel coming in. I'm going to cut to another bevel, but then I'm getting kind of square in the end. I don't, I don't quite know where those two things meet, and I don't know how to figure that out exactly. You can only kind of guess at it. I don't want this end... I don't want it any thinner than that. Like that is a good thickness right in there. So I'm gonna look at that and see. Back to the grind, but I've picked up some stuff. I got some rope because my lantern slash hourglass needs rope to hold it by. Got that rope. This is a nice threaded rope. I don't know if I wanna take these two and like maybe thread them, or I don't know if I wanna take this, double it up, and thread it together. It's a little thin. But the alternative was inch thick rope, which was thicker, about the right thickness, but it was more and you get less rope. Like with this, I thought, well, I could double it up and it's still coming ahead. So the little thing I want by can double it up. I got some goat fur, what will approximate to goat hair. A little thick for goat hair, so I guess it depends if you're like a, what, like a mountain goat? Maybe a goat in colder temperatures, maybe you get this. But what I liked about this fur is it's very varied like there's a variation of color you know, i didn't want something like all black all brown like this it's like a lot of color going on there and i like that a little rugged looking that's okay my hoof i was thinking what do i do with hooves and i was realized oh i can just do an eva foam paint the eva foam black it'll be great and you know somehow I'll just i'll need to cut this first so it tapers put the seam on the inside i like this this is going to look good for my goat hooves to go on my stilts and holy cow this this hair is just hair everywhere I got a bunch of cloth. I had to dye this, yes, because this type of cloth, I think it's like perm press. It always comes like very white tan, but I love the weave in it, the texture in it. And it's pretty, still pretty smooth, pretty soft. But I do like that. And that is a bunch of cloth, like six yards of it. That should be enough to build the hood, the robe, the skirt. Now the tabard, I do want that in wool. Plus I went did not have any wool. Because I've got enough wool for the front half, just not the back half. I think I'm just going to have to buy that Amazon. I bought the wool I had. I bought on Amazon. I bought a blanket for like 20 bucks. Let's buy another blanket. I should have more than I need. Wish I had already what I need, but I don't. Need to work on the scythe. That is making problem. I mean, look at this thing. This thing, I got to hold it up again because it's looking good. I mean, look at that. It, just my stilts. It looks huge. I like it. I mean, look, look at that. 
four feet of sickle blade. So I need to just button up the bottom. It is not buttoned up. And I think I've pretty much worked that out how. I mean, it's going to be a little funky here. But I think a Dremel could help fix some of that. And then once that's done, it just slides. This slides over my PVC skeleton. There we go. I mean, look at that. That blade. He's like, I just picture myself, you know, posing for photos, holding the scythe up. The blade is above my head. I mean, look at that. It looks sexy. So I'm gonna I'm gonna double check, make sure, you know, because I made Dremel at the bottom here. You know, some of my cuts were a little uneven because I was doing it by hand. But just kind of glancing at it, I think these things will glue up fairly well. Uh, there's probably a few spots I need to Dremel out a little bit just to just get a really good fit. But even then, I mean, if this thing's eight feet up, if I have a little bit of a ridge or a little bit of an edge, you're not going to notice it. It's just too far away. And I have double checked this. This does fit on the PVC skeleton just fine, which is good. And I've got somewhere, I've got, you know, the back piece. So, like, this whole piece, it'll fit on the shaft like that. I just I love, the, like, this shape compared to that looks good i figured out how to make this oh and then I, I glued my foam over here i glued this foam together so i can cut basically vertical vertical strips so it'll wrap around my the shaft of it and that is taking way more foam than i ever anticipated but so it is so i'm getting everything glued up glued in roughed in so i can start building and i had put this is part of the site it's going for it and i had flattened the end of it and so i go to test fit how the blade fits on this and things aren't working out right and i realized that this keys into keys into this post like this well i had put it on the other side like that I had pulled it all out we have to redo it of course at least i caught it before it dried it was in there pretty good without it even being dry so i think we're on the right track now it's a matter of trimming trying to get things fit to fit because this edge this top edge of this t is kind of my line of where i'm trying to get these things to drop through. So I've trimmed the top of this, I've trimmed the corner of it, and it is pretty close. I'm looking for this foam to fit flat against the tee, and for the top of it to be about even. And we're, it's like a little off, but it's just about good. Passable. So I think we're good on that. Now I just need to get the blade part to fit. I have flattened this. I've trimmed it. I may have to trim it some more. I may trim the, I don't really want to trim the bottom. Like once you trim both sides off, you have these two things flop, flopping. This part's a little bit rigidity, so I may trim it down and curve down on it. We'll see. Because it's still pretty rigid. I mean, it's, it's a little wavy. You know, you cut the top off, you lose a little bit of rigidity. But it's got some. So I'd like to retain what I've got and not cut off the bottom. I may need to heat it, may need to shape it, may need to bend it. We'll see. I'm hoping we can work with what we got and get the blade fitting because we're close, man. It's starting to look like a thing. I would like to get the scythe done. I mean, at this point, I'm mapping out my days. How many days do I have left? What can I get done? And I think after I get the scythe done, I think the mask, because that really is just a matter of painting it. Let's, let's get over it. And I need to paint my gloves too. They just need a good wash. You know, like I said, uh, very early on, I want to wash everything in red, just kind of give it a bit of a creepy effect. Red does that. But the mask, I don't want to paint it with the sunglasses in there, because I have to tape them off. It's going to be tough. I need to clean it up really well, paint it white. And I'm going to look at my scorpion mask. I really like how I painted that. I painted it white. And then just kind of did some dry brushing of black and kind of like smeared it, smeared it around the eyes. Like a very rough looking paint job. I thought it was very effective. A little messy, a little unkempt, and it worked. And so I want to do, do the same thing with that. will not do a red wash on the mask. I think that's just going to look a little too weird. Once the mask is painted, glue the sunglasses in there. Then I can start doing LEDs. I'm going to do LEDs around the top of the eye, maybe around the side. I mean, the way the sunglasses gap, it kind of provides a gap at the top. Fill that with hot glue, put some LED lights in there to diffuse it. Hopefully it's not too bright on my eye. On my eye. I may need to put some kind of reflector or something in there. I'm hoping it all works. We'll see. Put some red lights in the back of the mask just so it glows red in the back of the skull. I think it's going to look great with the red insert. That's that. Now I probably need to get on the robe. I probably have my cloth now so I can start the robe and everything else. I was thinking about this. I have wool. Now I want to do uh, kind of like a wool tabard for I tried to dye this wool, it would not dye, I think, because wool just is naturally resistant to dye. And so I wanted to do this a lot of black. This obviously is a gray. I may just leave it at that. I think grays and blacks are some different colors. I think it's going to add some interest to it. The gray, kind of faded black, I think that works to what I'm building. And it just won't dye. And I do like the wool. I think that just makes sense for a wool, a tapper. That's where we are. Plenty of other things to do. I mean, 
my lantern. I haven't even started on that, and that's a big part of this costume. I'm not to the point of panic yet. We're still fairly early in the month, but it's getting to the point where the day's starting to tick down, and it's like, oh man, I, I feel like I should be farther ahead. I wish I hadn't, you know, knocked off early a couple of nights. But we're here. We're gonna keep going. I'd like to get a lot done tonight, and have fun get a big push this weekend, and be right where we need to be. Like, cause like right now, I feel confident we're gonna make it. Like, yeah, I wish we'd done more in the lantern. But lantern, I think I can knock that out in the weekend. I mean, I got everything else to do too, but it'll get there. All right, so looking at my side, I'm liking where things are going. I mean, it looks like the bottom blade part is going to fit well. I need to glue this thing to the skeleton first just because there's no way to insert this whole thing in there and get it right. Uh, my flat part up here is looking good. I think I need to flatten it a little bit farther down. So I'm getting like this weird kind of bulge we go from flat to non-flat. I think if I can just flatten that an inch or two more, I think that'll make a smoother transition. Because what's happening is it's so tight it doesn't quite want to meet. So get a little bit of bulge in there so I try to meet it. But I mean, overall, like trimming it definitely helped a bunch. Like I just barely cleared that. I just, it's a little weird. Like it just didn't quite want to wrap where I don't have it flat. So I need to extend that a little more, heat that up. It's meeting the post well. Uh, now this is a T, the T's a little wide on that side. I am gonna trim out my phone a little bit just so it sits a little flatter. So I geared this for one inch wide PVC. Well, it gets about a quarter inch wider, three inch wider at the post. And that uh, just, that's where we gap. But I'm just saying it's starting to come together. I like how the blade is fitting. Once the blade fits, I need to wrap this whole thing. I'm starting with the whole thing wrapped in foam. It's going to be easier to grab. I can carve out, make it kind of look like this old, gnarled stick piece of wood. So I'm going to flatten this, trim that. Good. I can't, I can't wait. I can't, oh, the bad thing is I can't put this together and swing it in my shop. My swap is too small. I can't wait tomorrow to take it outside and see what it looks like. I think it's going to be awesome. Been a little bit of pressure thinking about how many days I've worked and how many days I have left. I'm working on my scythe, trying to get that done. Cleaned up my mask, gonna go ahead and try to paint that tonight, just to get a jump on that, because that's gonna have to dry for, you know, I like to wait 24 hours before I work on it, and I need to do, you know, a little bit of work on it. Get some black paint, get some splatter, get some smears, some smudges before I glue the sunglasses in, all that stuff. The scythe, so I, just to kind of, so this T, has a bit of a gap and I'm using some craft to fill in that gap so that when I glue kind of what looks like the the head of it on it doesn't step uh, but I was thinking like could I use craft foam for the entire thing but I think I'd use a lot of craft foam uh, the craft foam I have these are two sheets these two sheets are gonna make this T kind of make this flush well I craft foam I don't know if I want to use them all use it with my craft foam just to get this going but I do like the, the handle be a little bit thinner you still got the foam two layers still gives me yeah, I could kind of cut through one layer and make it knurled like I'm look like I want to. I don't know. It'd be easier than doing the full like floor mat, a bit thinner. I think it's gonna be a little easier to grab. So it's not gonna be so smushy. No, that because you're still gonna have a seam down the side. Have a seam down the side no matter what though, even if I use floor mat. So I'm maybe leaning towards just using craft foam. And you know, if I take this sheet, can I rotate it? Maybe make it vertical where I have fewer seams or fewer horizontal seams or as few as I can. One thing about that, I like that idea. The craft foam is a little bit easier to glue to this thing. Just it just bends a little bit easier, a little more flexible. I mean, I like I like the way this feels. This thing is kind of big. I mean, it's a it's a big diameter, but I wanted that. I mean, it's sturdy enough to support me when I'm on stilts and basically using it as a cane. So I'm gonna think about that. And this is why I like to jump around on the different aspects of the project. I want to think about: Do I want to use the craft foam? Do I want to use the floor mats? Well. I can jump to another part of the project and think about that. Like, oh, do I want to? Do I not want to? And it's one of those things, like, it's like when you're in the shower or driving, you're focused on those things, but your mind is kind of spinning in the background. Same way with costume. If I, want, if, I'm in my, if I need my mind to just spin in the background on this, like what I want to do with it, I'm going to move to another part of it. I'll just think about that in the background as I'm doing whatever task I'm on. This is going to be kind of the wrap for the head of it. I mean, basically it's supposed to look like this is the head, the whole, the whole blade, and little hilt or everything not a hilt who knows what it is that whole blade it's like well it'd be one head you slide over this wood post that's what it's supposed to look like that's what all this is going to do that's why i'm building this up so i don't get a weird stab it looks like one complete piece here is the side we're looking at the top of it so this is that craft foam i use and it just about is even with this t fitting neat nice clean transition to where the foam that's going to be the head of it it doesn't all of a sudden dip down It'll be a nice smooth transition. And then we'll dip down here where we resource the handle. That's gonna look good. Here's my mask, painted it. 
Then I use kind of a, kind of like an off-white. I don't like pure white, it's just too bright, and bones are a little more off-white. I like this. I spray it a little thin, just because I wanted a little bit of mottled look to it. I don't want it looking too clean, too perfect. Now, I will come back and just kind of smear some black in the nose and the mouth. I want to close up those holes, either with just some kind of material or something, just so they're not so open. Sunglasses in the eyes, I'm going to black out with paint around the eyes, just so you... You can't quite tell where the sunglasses start and where the mask ends. I, you know, I want it to look, I want it to look a little more natural. Uh, you know, I'll probably just do smear, make it a little messy, maybe do some highlights, maybe do just kind of a wash just to get it looking exactly how I want it to. But I like this. I mean, this looks good. I really, I hate that hole right there. I hate all the holes. And I made this one, and I could plastic weld it from the back if I wanted to. Really do some nice dirt and some wash work around the teeth because you want it like, you want it dirty. And it needs to look like it's caked in over the years. Kind of the whole thing needs a good wash just to highlight some of these crevices and stuff. I really want to hit around the eyes, make it really dark, and then you kind of taper it out. Like kind of gradient, not taper, gradient out around the eyes. Just so I don't I want them to lose where the sunglasses and mask start. And then I'll do some LEDs at the top. Uh, yeah, this thing's, look, I like I like that mask a lot. Like that color. I think this is the exact color I used on the Scorpion mask, and it just, it looks perfect. It's a little bit of an off-white, which is what a skeleton should be. Now, I may, I don't know if I go back and try to, like, yellow the teeth. We'll see. I think a little bit of dirt just around the gum area will help a lot. Some black around here. You know, I thought about cutting the bottom half off. I don't know. Like, right now, I'm like, oh, I don't really want to, because it creates a lot more work, and it's a minimal gain. But I might. I don't know. Or do I just try to hinge it here? Uh, it's a good idea, certainly, but I'm going to have to create a whole under mask for myself just so you don't see anything here. I don't know. We'll have to think about that, but good color. Looks better than silver. Check out the mask. It came out very well. Now, you notice I didn't paint it gray. Finally, it's kind of an off-white color. That's why this is off-white. I didn't do a great job painting it around the edges. I wanted to leave it a little not well covered, poor coverage. Just because I want this thing looking a little gritty, a little rough. And when I do the highlights uh, with the black, I'm going to do it by hand. Kind of finger painting. Because I want it looking rough. I want it kind of smeared and just, like that's the look I'm going for. Kind of messy aesthetic. And that is it. And I'll really black out the eyes. Kind of you know, look for a place for highlights and lowlights. Well, highlights? I may not do any highlights. Probably just lowlights. Look for some of these shadows, some of these lower areas in the face. You know, get kind of a shadow, menacing look. But I mean... I like the look of this thing. This thing looks good. I've always liked this mask. This will be the second time I've used this mask. You know, I used one last year. May use one again next year. Oh, uh, no. Next year I want to be the Hamburglar. I don't think I have a skull mask. That's going to need to paint this a little bit. For right now, I'm going to work on the scythe. And all I have are these small craft foam things. I want to wrap the handle in craft foam. It's going to take 15 of these sheets because this is the. That's all I got. And you can't wrap it vertically because it it's not enough to go around. So you got to wrap it the horizontal orientation. And that's this all the way down it's a lot and it makes me wonder am i gonna have to do do i even have 15 of these i think i have oh yeah i got 15 but it's gonna really wipe out my stock i almost wonder if i need to do two layers but i don't really i don't really want to Prefer not to i guess i could if i had to because my concern too is when i apply these and i heat seal them it's going to cause things to shrink create some ripples but probably could figure out you know way to use that to my advantage make it look like some kind of damage or like the way it's supposed to look i just i don't want the i've never liked the pc you just can't really carve into it quite like you can with the phone the phone is easier to carve just cool to look better grip on things gosh i used to have i used to have sheets like four times as big as this and that would have been great and whenever i last re-upped and ordered they didn't have any larger sheets which is unfortunate because that's would have been easier now but hindsight can't always win here is my mask. Got it all painted. Now I used some black oil paint. And the thing with that is, you can't, once you put it on there, it's not really coming off. Like you're kind of stuck with it. So I put that around the eyes, around the mouth, and around the nose. And I did try to clean up a little bit with the teeth because it, I mean, it puts black everywhere. And I like that. It kind of tints the color you have. And then I went over it with watercolor. Um, you can see some browns, some yellows, some reds. Went over some blacks and whites just to get some like highlights and other lights. Like really get this model effect. Like you want, I like it looking messy. Like that, that just, I love the look of that. That looks scary, that looks messy, I mean, that's looks real. Uh, I thought, sometimes I have, and I thought about doing this one, is get some spray paint, brown or black, whatever color, and really far away, 
I just kind of missed it. Just get like a little bit splatter, a little bit of this model effect, because that looks a lot more realistic. I thought about doing that, and then I just started doing all the water panels. I thought, you know what? Probably as fine as it is. No one's really gonna care. And this certainly kind of achieving the effect I want. A little bit of red in there. You know, I said I was gonna do some red wash. I thought I'd do a little bit of red just to create that color around. I like this came out. I did add some foam on the inside because this thing just sat way too close to my face. So I added foam on each cheek. And the only padding that came with it was the padding on the forehead. I added that too. So that way it fits a little bit farther off my face. I might fit better. I need to add the sunglasses in here, some LEDs. Here is the fit. That way it's off my face. Before it was like right on my face. And I'll have to do something like some kind of ascot or something for my neck. So actually, I don't want you to see my neck. I want it the illusion that I am the Grim Reaper. I want to say a turtleneck, but it's this mask. I wish it hung a little lower past my chin. Maybe I can get just attach some material, some cloth, and have it draped down and really be an ascot to kind of tuck in. We'll see. Yeah, once I get those sunglasses, you want me to see my eyes, and that'll be a very good look. Now, I thought about detaching the jaw so my jaw would move. I'm not going to do it. It's just more trouble than I want to go to right now. And I'm working on the side. You can see the head of it. I glued this on. So this will be kind of the head where the blade and the, I don't know what this thing is called, meet in. It'll be thinner at the top because this is kind of where the post goes through the head. The post here. I'm just going to use the craft foam, wrap it all the way down. So much craft foam. But that's the way I want to do it. Oh, you know, weathering the mask. I should have been weathering the gloves. These, like, definitely need some uh, watercolor. Just get some of the same colors, some of the same tones, and kind of get black in some of these groups. These just, they look a little too clean, a little too easy, and they need to look messy. And that's, re that's really how you do it. Just make things look a little messy. So let me throw some paint on these. Actually, clean them up first. Anytime you paint, you want to clean it up first. Because I've been handling this, and it may have been in some kind of mold, mold release, paint won't stick. You don't want that. But I need to weather that up. But the, the mask is good. The only thing I don't like, I got like a little bit of dark right in here. You can see I went back over it with some white just to brighten it back up because it was so dark. And hopefully since I did this early, a lot of times I'll wait and do the mask a little late. Hopefully since I did it early, it'll off gas. Because putting it on right now, you get a little bit of a contact high. Not what you're after. Well, likely not what you're after when you're wearing costume. But I need to work on that. 